Let's talk about local, otherwise known as relative, extrema. To find the local extrema of this particular function right here, we have to find the critical points. The critical points are where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. After finding those critical points, we'll do a line analysis on the derivative to determine whether our derivative is changing from positive to negative or from negative to positive. If the derivative changes from positive to negative, we have a local max. And if the derivative changes from negative to positive, we have a local min. So let's get started. We'll start by taking the derivative with respect to x. This is equal to 6x cubed plus 12x squared minus 18x. Now this derivative is continuous everywhere. Therefore, there are no x values where the derivative does not exist. So what we have to do now is determine where this is equal to 0. We can factor out a 6x. So we have 6x times x squared plus 2x minus 3. And this is all equal to 0. We can factor x squared plus 2x minus 3. This is 6x times x minus 3 plus 3 and x minus 1 and this is equal to 0. So we have critical points at x equals 0 right here, x equals negative 3 and at x equals 1. These are the three places where our derivative is equal to zero. Now critical points are not necessarily extrema because a critical point is only where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Consider the following function right here. This function is going to, go, it's going to increase derivative of zero and then increase again. This spot right here where the derivative is equal to zero is neither a max nor a min. The reason is because on the left hand side the derivative is positive. On the right hand side the derivative is positive again. So in order to double check our extrema what we have to do is determine whether the derivative is changing sign. And to do that we are going to create what is called a line analysis on y prime. So here's the graph of y prime. Let's graph our critical points. The critical points are at negative 3, 0, and 1. We're going to look in each of these intervals to the left of negative 3, in between negative 3 and 0, between 0 and 1, and to the right of 1, and we are going to pick a number, plug it into our derivative, and determine whether the derivative is positive or negative at that particular point. So let's look to the left of negative 3. How about negative 5? Negative out here, negative in here, and negative over here. A negative times a negative times a negative is negative. So our derivative is negative to the left of negative 3. How about between negative 3 and 0? For example, negative 1. Negative, positive, negative. Negative times a positive times a negative gives us a positive. Now let's check it between 0 and 1, like for example 1 half. Positive, positive, negative. So this is negative in between 0 and 1. Let's check to the right of 1. Positive, positive, positive. Now, our derivative is changing sign at negative 3, at 0, and at 1. Now at negative 3, the derivative is changing from negative to positive. That means that we have a local minimum at x equals negative 3. Likewise, we have a local minimum at x equals 1, again because the derivative is changing from negative to positive. And because the derivative is changing from positive to negative at x equals 0, we say that we have a local max at x equals 0. Now what we've done here is we have found where the extrema are.
However, we haven't found what the extrema are. We know that we have extrema at x equals negative 3, 0, and 1. We know the locations of our extrema. But the extreme values are the y values of the function at those points. So to find the actual extreme values of y, you would have to plug these three x values back into your original equation, which I've done. Now, at x equals negative 3, y is negative 1 15 over 2. So this is a relative minimum of y. At x equals 0, y is 10. So here is a relative max of y. And at x equals 1, y equals 13 over 2. Here's another relative min. I've also graphed this. Now you'll notice that at x equals negative 3, this isn't just a local min. This is also the global min of the whole function. At x equals 0, we're going to call this for the time being a local max. And the reason for that is because we didn't have any specified region that we were looking in. You'll notice that as x goes to negative infinity, our function goes up to infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, our function goes up to infinity still. Now infinity is much bigger than, for example, 10. However, if the question said on the interval from negative 3 to 1, what is the global max? In that case, the answer would be 10 because we've restricted our domain and we're just looking in this region. However, if we're looking from negative 3 to, oh, I don't know, 2, you'll notice that the point at 2 is higher than the one at x equals 0. But we'll get to that in the next section when we talk about uh, global extrema. We're still on local, so at the moment we're going to call this a local max at x equals 0, and the local max is y equals 10. And finally, we have a local min at x equals 1, and the, and the actual minimum value is 13 over 2. Let's check out another problem. Let's find the relative maxima of y equals 3x to the fifth minus 4x cubed minus 3x. First step, let's find the critical points. So we'll find where dy dx either is equal to 0 or does not exist. We get 15 x to the fourth minus 12 x squared minus 3. Now this always exists, so let's set this equal to 0. We can divide everything by 3 right off the bat, so we have 5 x to the fourth minus 4 x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. This we can factor using a quadratic. Here we have 5 x squared and x squared. And let's see, we have negative 1 and positive 1 would work. So here we have 5x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, or x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. We can solve both of these. 5x squared is equal to negative 1. And of course, we're not going to get any real values from this one over here, so let's just forget about that for now. We can add 1 to this side. So here we have x squared is equal to 1, which means that x is equal to plus or minus 1. Now keep in mind again that these are just our critical points. That does not mean that these are necessarily extrema. To check, let's do our line analysis on y prime. Now we know that y prime is equal to 5x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. So let's plug in both the negative 1 or something to the left of negative 1 and something to the right of positive 1 and in between into our derivative. Let's look to the left. How about negative 2? Here, if you plug in negative 2, it'll be positive. Here, it'll still be positive. So this is positive over here. Let's try 0. It'll be positive. 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 minus 1 is negative. So we have a negative in there. Now let's try 2, positive and positive. 
which means that we have a relative maximum at x equals negative 1 because y prime is changing from positive to negative. And we have a relative minimum at x equals 1 because y prime is changing from negative to positive. Now, to actually find what the max and min are, we need to plug in both negative 1 and 1. So, let's first plug in negative 1. Negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. And then negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So the value here is 4. So we have a relative max at x equals negative 1. And the relative maximum is 4. Likewise, let's find the minimum value. Let's plug in 1. When you plug in 1, you get 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Minus 3 is negative 4. So we have a relative min at x equals 1, and the relative min value is negative 4.